Thank you all for uh, joining us here at the East West Center in Washington. Delighted to have you for, uh, I think, what is going to be a terrific program with a, a very much a prominent figure in South Korean education and South Korean political and foreign policy analysis, my old colleague and friend, Dr. Sung Shin, who I think we first met maybe over around 20 years ago yeah, at the like Asia Pacific. I cannot believe yeah, it. I know. I can't believe it. You look just like we did 25 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it's a delight, Sung always to have you with us here at the East West Center. And, and thank you for agreeing to do this talk. I had um, talked to the, uh, to the board at the Academy Awards about deciding their selection of the best movie and the four prizes built around Sunpo's talk. And so they cooperated very well in giving the prize to uh, Parasite. I yeah. would encourage you, for those who have not seen the movie, to see it in kind of a perfect segue into talking about progressive politics, domestic politics in South Korea, and the meaning of it all. And uh, as you know, Sung Ho is at Seoul National University, and he's the dean of the, the graduate school. and professor there as well. And he's going to take us through a PowerPoint for about 30 or 40 minutes. The ground rules today are we are, as I said, on live stream webcast. We are on the record. Um, and the uh, question and answer period at the end of uh, Sung Ho's talk is also on the record. So with that, it's your program, Sung Ho. OK. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sato. Uh, it's always uh, you know, my great pleasure of being at East West Center with my good old friends. Uh, we used to work together at the Asia Pacific Center for Security Studies and in Honolulu, Hawaii. <laughs> what a wonderful place. And yes. what a, uh, good, so many good memories go back to those days. And uh, <clears throat> as Satu uh, mentions, uh, uh, today uh, my talk uh, is about uh, South Korean domestic politics. But as a one kind of uh, disclaimer, I'm not an expert on that uh, domestic political issue. I'm more of an uh, IR, uh, or more specifically, international security uh, specialist by my uh, training. So I used to always talk about you know, North Korea, the nuclear negotiation, us ROK alliance, or East Asian you know, uh, uh, security issues, especially focusing on Northeast Asia, which is always been a kind of, you know, under the radar, uh, uh, even uh, here in Washington, D.C., for obvious reason. But uh, this time, when Satu uh, suggested me, uh, why don't I give a talk uh, here, uh, which is, by the way, I think it's a great privilege. Okay? Yeah. And I decided to talk a little bit about this thing, uh, because simply first, everybody talks about North Korea. Uh, and, uh, you know, we know pretty much what's going on already, and yes, Andrew is talking point and discussion and debate. It's like a movie repeating all the time. So maybe I want to you know, uh, divert a little bit away from that. And uh, for now, as in fact, as you know, there's nothing happening in fact, uh, since the uh, you know, last uh, meeting between uh, Mr. Trump and Kim Jong-un in last June in uh, Panmunjom. So, still lots of speculation what will happen. Probably I will talk about it later on eventually. Oh, you know, Korea's US ROK alliance, yes, there are some burden sharing issue, special measures agreement, which is a kind of, you know, a hot button issue right now. But again, uh, everybody already knows about it, talks about it enough. But then I think uh, I found you know, they're saying that uh, every politics is local. And eventually, uh, all the things, the speculation about uh, the international relations and foreign policy of South Korea, maybe it is also quite useful to look into what's happening in Korean domestic politics. Because I think that it, it, it is, the more I uh, study about this issue, we tend to always separate the foreign policy versus domestic politics. But if you go back to you know uh, political science 101, we all know that no, you cannot separate those issues, especially so-called under the democratic regime. So depending on uh, what uh, uh, you know, uh, the party or what uh, uh, president you have, who is by the way chosen by the people, the society, 
it may have a much more fundamental uh, impact on the uh, foreign policy or education of uh, any given government. So, and I think, especially this time uh, in Korea, there's a, I mean, Korea has been a very dynamic country. There's always something happening, right? But uh, over the past couple of uh, months, I noticed there's also quite significant, or if I may say, some fundamental changes happening in South Korean domestic political landscape, which is not quite, uh, uh, you know, uh, well understood by not only outside uh, audience, but also even among the Korean. We always talk about, you know, who gets the next you know, presidency, who get, who will win this coming general election. It's going to be the you know, governing party, the, you know, the progressive versus conservative, or, you know, all those Park Geun-hye versus you know Moon Jae-in, or all. But in that kind of uh, daily debate. I think uh, there's uh, some uh, very important changes happening in shape of not, in, not necessarily by only one president's uh, policy, but it reflects upon actually more fundamental changes that are happening in South Korea, which is I think quite important enough. Uh, so that's why uh, enough you know background talk. So what's happening in South Korea? What, why, why I think it is quite important. <coughs> this first uh, po photo shows. Uh, this was the scene of uh, President Moon's uh, uh, New Year's uh, uh, press conference uh, this January. And as you can see, it's in Korean. He was sitting like this. By the way, this in and itself is a quite unorthodox format for uh, President's uh, uh, press conference. In Korea, you know, the real is president, they already Maybe uh, Ambassador Hubbard knows quite well. Under the previous government, they always, you know, they're very, they don't want to make any mistake. They don't want to have any accident happen. So everything has to be set up before it comes in. And they will already have a given uh, question by the, all those reporters. They pretty much know who is going to, or they, in fact, you know. So it is pretty much staged event, uh, especially under the previous uh, government. Uh, maybe exception was like uh, President Long Myung, his uh, own boss before. He was just it's like here in the United States. They just sit there, no script before. They don't know what kind of question they are going to get. This was that was uh, how it happened. He was sitting in front of hundreds of reporters, both foreign and domestic, and they could ask any question. Second, but doing so. He was sitting alone and uh, with this uh, Korean catchphrase. People didn't pay that much attention, but when he put that kind of bold letter in front of him, there must be something he is trying to say, right? Uh, through that uh, very important uh, conference. So in Korean, if I may say this is, uh, there's no exact English translator. I wish I would have a Bong Joon-ho's translator today so she could you know, speak for me. <laughs> but, this was actually pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, this is uh, in Korean, Park Chiran Byona is a uh, uh, change for sure. Maybe I, I'm not sure whether this is a uh, 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 translation of this uh, language, but change for sure. I will make it sure that there will be change. And then on the line is uh, the you know, Republic of Korea 2020. So he was basically saying there will be a change uh, in 2020 in South Korea. What change is talking about? <clears throat> uh, to get there as a kind of background of, for those who may not uh, know the President Moon's uh, background, he used, to, uh, he used to be the chief of staff for the late president Law, and in fact, even before then, they were, it goes all the way back like Satwe. <laughs> they used to be the co-workers. They used to share, have a you know a, a small uh, law firm, a legal office, uh, many working for this uh, labor union and all that. So they are kind of big, kind of you know, progressive oriented uh, politician, and. And uh, Moon was not very much interested in the politics, uh, is, they say, but Law asked him, uh, you, know, you please help me, uh, since you are the only few people that I can really trust. 
I need you. So he joined uh, Blue House uh, on the role as the chief of. Uh, at first, his job was uh, uh, senior secretary of civil affairs, which I will talk about later on. Anyway, and then uh, you know he served uh, pretty much five years in Blue House as uh, one of the key aides uh, uh, to the present law. By the way, this is the photo that uh, when President Law was indicted by the prosecutor's office for kind of uh, bribery and wrongdoing while he was at the president office. This was after Law just uh, you know retired from the his term ended. He was indicted by the prosecutor's office, so he was you know coming to the you know uh, the court, appearing to the court and. Accompanied by Moon, both are by the way, lawyers uh, by their own uh, training, and you know we know what happened. <coughs> there, is, there was a tragic event of uh, uh, present law, and but so many people could say uh, in a way, uh, laws, uh, Moon's policy is uh, law uh, administration or law million two point one. Uh, it's just basically following what law trying to achieve. And in a way, I think it is true. Uh, he, 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 there is a kind of loss of uh, reform and change law was trying to uh, implement under his, during his presidency. But many of the major reform agenda has been you know, kind of uh, in disarray, was not fulfilled, it was unfinished business. So when Moon came, uh, ten, some 10 years later, as uh, another prime successor to his own boss, uh, obviously lots of his uh, political agenda and domestic reform follow, basically follows what Law was trying to say. The difference is he's doing it. Law is making it happen right now. That's the change uh, in talk. By the way, this is just uh, some uh, uh, statistics about South Korea. But South Korea is a kind of number 12 economy in the world. Small uh, uh, by the standard in the, the region compared to Japan and China and the United States. But you know, overall in the world, the ranking 12 is quite aggressive. Especially if you look at all those other indicators, you know, uh, unemployment rate, economic growth, especially the national debt with only 38%. South Korean economy is doing quite well, very well you know, uh, positioned compared to like Japan, which has 250 uh, national uh, uh, percent debt and United States goes over 100%. Uh, of course, it's not only the simple numbers, but there is a certain. And also in terms of manufacturing, this is another chart. South Korea ranks number five in the world. We produce a lot. So South Korea, in and itself, uh, is a quite uh, uh, important uh, in its uh, role as uh, in, the, in terms of global economy, as you know, uh, you know all those uh, global chain or manufacturing chain and all that. So not so bad, but this is what happened just uh, last December. Uh, with just uh, two weeks before or three weeks before Moon's uh, press conference. <coughs> Maybe some of you who uh, remember what was going on in over in South Korean domestic politics, this is quite familiar scene. You may see it is always kind of what they call, they call it uh, kind of, you know, here in the United States we, we have a movie called Animal House. So they call it uh, uh, Animal uh, National Assembly. <laughs> Uh, and uh, but one thing is uh, this time still for Korean uh, standard it was still quite okay better than let's say before it used to be much worse. <laughs> <laughs> this was really the animal house like ten years ago. Whenever there's a like, political issues and debate between both you know uh, conservative or what, whatever the governing opposition party, they was just going crazy you know. So, you know, as a Korean student studying in the United States, I was like so, you know, ashamed when you know, CNN showed those kind of photos. But 
good thing is it's not only South Korea, it's Taiwan, the similar thing happening, especially young, you know, vibrant democracy. In fact, this was what was going on, in fact, this time. So, in a way, still, you know, you know there, there is a well, waging a protest. This is a main uh, opposition party, you know, a protest against very important legislation that has been passed in the last December, end of last December, by this uh, chairman who is the leader of the governing party right now, the Moon Jae-in's party. There was a very narrow uh, uh, passage, the, the, because the opposition party completely, uh, uh, it's like here in the United States, uh, the between Democrat and the Republican over you know, impeachment, it was completely followed the party line. But uh, in fact, uh, the governing party didn't have enough vote. So they had to uh, um, uh, what, ally with uh, the shape alliance with uh, four other minor parties. So uh, they could only barely pass the bill after they uh, make alliance with, so they call it four plus one uh, fast track legislature. Four plus one fast track. And of course, the uh, opposition party still holds a quite large majority in, the, in our National Assembly, so they were staging a protest, but in fact, uh, there is an interesting story behind this. But anyway, what is what are those uh, new legislation? Out uh, three, but in fact, it comes out to more of two. First is uh, there has been a very important uh, change in our election uh, system. The coming the general election, uh, selecting the national assembly. So you used to have a. Uh, 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 single member constituency, simply speaking, we not take it all in each of the uh, uh, district. But it doesn't reflect the, the real kind of, uh, I mean, so you have like in each district, there is a, a, a candidate from the governing party, opposition party, the third party, fourth party, or whatever. And whoever wins the most majority of both will be elected, wins the seat. And that's it. Then what about? And in most cases, those uh, uh, you know elected uh, congressmen will get like twenty five percent, over twenty four percent of his opponent, or ten percent of third party candidate. And then you know twenty five percent of those uh, winning uh, congressmen will compose whole national assembly. So eventually, in that process. Whoever still on the 10% doesn't count at all in our national assembly. That used to be our winner takes all single member constituency system. <coughs> Whereas now they are changing, moving into a kind of proportional representation. It's more like, and that, in fact, there has been already that kind of element before, but they are enlarging it in quite substantial way. So I try to you know figure out exact term and the exact you know example of that. But the, the most uh, closest one that I could get was the German system. I don't know whether if you know about the German electoral system, that's how they are going for. Anyway, so that's the one major new uh, legislature. Second. Another important uh, bill, uh, they put it together and uh, they uh, passed it as a kind of fast track. Uh, reform bill for the prosecution's office, which I will talk about. And then the third one is voting right for the 18 years old, so one year still younger. And I think, uh, I, I didn't know that South Korea uh, used to be 19 years old for voting, which is the oldest among all OECD countries. Even in the United States, you have uh, 18 years. That has a 14 white and all the other countries. Even there is a some 17 or 16 years old. Uh, the which country? Uh, some country gives that voting right. So, what that means? The first, this mixed uh, uh, proportional representation system. The bill. The top one is the current break uh, uh, bracket of current uh, the. Uh, 
member of each party's uh, parliament. We have basically <coughs> the three, 300 uh, uh -huh. national congressmen. Mm, 300. We don't have biochemical system, it's a one just. Uh, and out of those three, at the moment, the blue represents the governing party, Moon's party, 123. The red represents opposition party, the Liberty Korea party, 122. It's almost safe. And then the rest of the some third party and fourth party. This was because the main immunotational system. But if you put the new uh, law into the previous, that, but if you look at the uh, top, uh, this is the how much percentage of whole board as a party they get, not each candidate. So if you uh, apply those portion of party uh, 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 vote into the new law, it uh, becomes like this. Still, majority will go to the governing party and opposition party, but as you can see, the seat for the third party and fourth party will get much bigger than before. So these new minor parties will have much bigger political voice in Korean political system. That's the main change. That's this opposition party, the conservative, was so much afraid of and so much opposed. Because basically they are going to lose their own political uh, power in the National Assembly. And of course, one could, uh, uh, you could ask the question, what about the governing party? They are also losing some of their own party. Yes. Uh, so that's the only reason they could get a support from the minor uh, uh, party. So they could make alliance. And the secret is those minor parties have to be more progressive leaning, as opposed to this conservative opposition party. So this kind of thing, as far as I know, uh, never happened in Korean politics. Korean politics has been always, and the bottom line is, if you apply those you know, to this last local election, not the general election, the mayors and all those you know, local elections, at that time, the governing party picked one, whereas uh, the opposition party very, lose very badly, and it's much worse for the opposition party. Of course, we never know what will be the support uh, of the public to these uh, two parties this coming uh, election in April. Anyway. To give you just a kind of some very uh, basic uh, idea is why I this may uh, uh, represent a very fundamental changes is been first of all South Korean politics has been always it's like an American system. There are many minor parties comes and goes and with different names, but the basic structure was always you know conservative versus progressive. It's like a two party system. In particular, in those two party systems, which are represented by this uh, uh, blue and uh, this yellow, the blue represents the conservative, the right wing. That's the Park Geun-hye party, Lee Myung-bok party, or it all goes back to Park Jong-hye, John Doohan, you know, No Tae-woo, or even goes back to Seung Nam Lee. And basically, with this very simple two-party system structure for the last 70 years <coughs> almost all like a, for seven, except very uh, a few uh, two cases always especially the conservative took a majority they have always kept majority power in our national assembly even when president Long Moyan and the Kim Dae-jung became a president still at the, at the, at the national assembly always the conservative as an opposition party still they took the majority. So Korean, uh, when it comes to national assembly, even when the, the presidency, there is a kind of you know, back and forth between conservative and uh, you know, uh, uh, liberal candidate, national assembly has been largely dominated by the conservative basis. And that is going to change from now. It's not going to be very easy for conservative. Or if you will, maybe 
uh, from now for a, for a quite uh, foreseeable future, it may be the Labour <coughs> Party will dominate with the alliance of other minor parties. So that's what this new legislature brings into the, some quite important change in Korean domestic political landscape from the very conservative dominant uh, uh, political uh, landscape into a at least equal or more liberal leaning uh, kind of possible uh, structure. So that's, to me, the quite important change. That's happening, it, it just never happened before in 70 years of Korean, since the Korea, I mean, the, since the establishment of the uh, Republic of Korea under the Sengman Ri, throughout the, uh, you know, those military government always, they completely dominated national service. I mean, basically it's a rubber step, right? Uh, under, until the government, military government. But even after Korean democracy, still these conservative base, especially largely is representing the red part, what we call the TK. It's like in the United States currently, it's like more like you know, Republican party bases mm -hmm. in the South, uh, 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 South or the Midwest mm -hmm. and all those. These people were dominating Korean politics for 70 years. Second change is also <clears throat> the uh, reform of uh, prosecution service or uh, in Korean case, it's like, a, I don't know what it's exactly to say, it's a kind of FBI versus attorney general. May, may we ask a question? May yeah. Ask a question. In your prior slide, mm. you pointed out that the conservatives have always dominated the national legislature. Mm. But at the moment, it has not changed yet. You're looking forward to the future right. election. Yeah. So the election has not come out. Right. right. So we do not know at this point exactly whether it has sure, been changed. Sure, 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 right? sure, sure. And that legislation was passed, as you pointed out, barely. Right. Right. Yeah. So it could go back. Could it not? So that that's a still possibility. Uh, it could be like uh, always the conservative comes back and they will take a super majority and they will try to pass another this kind of law reversing the trend the change that could happen yeah. at least so, so right now, theory, let, right. let's let's hold up a little bit just sure. because hold i want to get through the friends we'll have plenty of time for discussion we'll okay why don't you move with the yeah, second yeah, yeah, yeah. structural change yeah. on the prosecutor so the prosecutor's uh, office yes i mean there's a big political scandal going on in korea right now but one of the bottom line is uh the Moon Jae-in's uh, agenda, uh, one of the, I think, his biggest, his personal agenda, simply because, you know, I, I, as I said at the very beginning, the late president law, he was indicted by the prosecutor's office, lots of this, this the progress to base, it was so unfair, it was uh, politically motivated, uh, and they were trying to get him, and because, why? Because law tried to, you know, uh, create a more check and balance over this very uh, powerful uh, uh, institution, well, which is not, by the way, uh, elected uh, uh, authority. They, they are appointed by the uh, president. But still, they, they used to wield such a huge power, not only in politics, but also in our society, simply because of uh, their very unique uh, features of their uh, uh, authority. Which is what? Because out of uh, uh, colonialism, somehow the prosecution's office has <coughs> both power. They can do the criminal in investigation, and then they can also indict. Which is a kind of, in many other uh, countries, is separate. Usually in the United States, it's the police investigate all those criminal cases, and they bring it to the prosecutor's office, and then they talk to each other whether this is a really serious crime or not, whether do they have enough you know, evidence, enough case. Then prosecutor's office took it and you know, put it in the court. In Korea, they have both power, the prosecutor's office, which that doesn't necessarily mean these are the bad people. I mean, there are, most of these uh, prosecutors, 
I personally sure, and many people understand, they really work hard, you know, to to uh, keep the justice and to keep the rule of law in in, in our system. So largely, for average people, in a way, it works. It's no problem. I mean, they are very elite, you know, group of people with a sense of mission and great pride, you know, and they ta tackle on all those big trouble and big crime. It's, it's, uh, so these are the the cream of the crop in our you know, uh, judicial system. And so, yes, last of you guess what? All those uh, smart kids want to become uh, you know, uh, a prosecutor in one day. But then that kind of too much power creates a mis I mean, you know, absolute power you know, crop. Uh, so there has been some negative aspect, especially when it comes to this political party of police, at the top especially, there has been lots of suspicion that these people, you know, goes back and forth, choosing a side for their own, you know, uh, organizational interests or convenience or whatever. The case, best in case in point was when the law uh, came up to power, they were after law because law tried to change that kind of structure. So that's a kind of, you know, uh, sentiment among them. But whatever, anyway, so this time there has been the effort to separate, to create a new kind of. So that's what happened, exactly. So now, from now on, the police will have investigative uh, authority, and then they have to work with the prosecutors. They got so in a way they have a both equal power when it comes to criminal, you know, investigation and case. Of course, the prosecutor's office they don't like it. And there has been a very strong resistance inside and, and all that. And it has become very much politicized, especially by the opposition party. So, and also not only that, they are going to create a kind of independent separate office to investigate the high-ranking official, meaning high-ranking prosecutors. Because in past, over the past 30 or 40 years, there has been a lot of some kind of bad, you know, uh, corruption and scandal, but no or whatsoever, no prosecutor has been ever indicted for any charges. That just simply tells you, I mean, if you are a human being, if you have like thousands of prisoners, there must be some bad efforts, but no matter what happens, they are untouchable simply. So they are creating that kind of independent uh, office, uh, prosecution. And so it has become very much uh, politicized, so one of the uh, things right now, big political scandal right now going on is one of Moon's key aides, uh, my former colleague, in fact, he used to be the pro uh, law professor at Seoul National, <laughs> and he was uh, quite active in uh, the, 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 the civil you know, movement and all that he has because they become good friends. He is a big supporter of a progressive movement, leading you know figures in those SNS and all that, and yes, he is good looking and you know tall. As the moment Moon came to office, he appointed him as his previous or his own previous job, which is as a senior secretary of civil affairs, which has a very big power. Within. Basically, he has the older job, you know, looking at if there's any wrong going on, corruption going on, and very high level of Korean society. So he has a very big, you know, authority and power. And then later on, but his main job was trying to uh, come up with you know, the legislature for that uh, reforming prosecutor's office. And then, to make it happen, Moon appointed him as attorney general, which in, in, the, in the official you know, authority, which used to be the, uh, you know, the boss of our, uh, the, the Mr. Yoon, the high prosecutor's office. But now, he's been indicted. Even though he was the Attorney General, he's been indicted by the prosecutor's office mm. for some personal wrongdoings. Mm. Which, by the way, is not his own wrongdoing, his wife. So I, I, I'm not going into the detail because of the time is you know, going fast. So this is just going on crazy. I mean, it's so much politicized. The liberal progressive completely, this is a big conspiracy by the prosecutor's office. And it's like a redux of uh, Lo Muyan, you know, uh, 10 years ago, 
Because at that time, also, Ron Muyan's uh, indictment was not about Ron Muyan's personal uh, uh, wrongdoing. It had to do with his own wife. Basically, most charges were very similar. His wife <coughs> accepted some money from the personal donors. And so, you know, if you are in high office, you cannot do, accept those kinds of anything. But there's a lot of gray area. So they are into the legal court right now, trying to, you know, really decide which was whether there was a real kind of crime or this was just a kind of bogus mm -hmm. indictment by the uh, prosecutor's office. But anyway, right now it's happening. And then, of course, uh, there is a big backlash from the conservative, uh, not only the conservative party, the base. Mm -hmm. And interesting enough, we call it Taegeuki Army. Uh, Taegeuki Army, uh, in Korean, Taegeuki Bude. Because they always bring out Taegeuki as a kind of nationalist. They, you know, they want to you know, uh, glorify the Koreas. And uh, for them, it's the you know, symbol of freedom <coughs> is Park Jung Yi, is the you know, father of Korean economic uh, development, and Park Geun Hye. They think the impeachment of Park Geun Hye is completely again, it's war. Uh, and yes, they always also bring the American flag. And they're also very much, uh, not everyone, but uh, strongly affiliated with the Christian base. You know, in Korean society, Christian base is very, very strong. And yes, they tend to also uh, like uh, President Trump. So right now, there's a kind of big political struggle going on uh, between the progressive agenda of reforming and changing those political and you know, power structure in Korea, whereas uh, those uh, conservatives trying to fight back. Uh, and each belief uh, they are doing the right thing. Um, and as a result, uh, Moon Jae-in's popularity was quite high, always over 50%, but as you can see, most recently, his uh, support popularity went below 50%, so 41%, whereas the negative uh, uh, evaluation went up to 50%. So at this moment, uh, it's like Moon Jae-in on the defensive. He, 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 he is a prospect for you know, following through this uh, reform and push forward uh, with this reform. It's a, it's a very hanging balance at the moment. Nobody knows what will happen. And, and this is, I will just skip that, but these are the stories, uh, everything is in Korean, but the supporting rate uh, of the current uh, Moon Jae-in uh, between the old ages, and 80, between 1829, 30s, 40s, interestingly enough, yes, still the, in general, 41% support, 50% <coughs> negative. But in 20s, uh, young generation, he is not very popular. Usually, the progressive, the young people tend to be, be, become more progressive liberal, is, which is not the case. Whereas the 30s and 40s, that's his major uh, base. And the goals, the older it gets, uh, they become more conservative. So they are very uh, 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 kind of they are, they oppose uh, on uh, Moon's uh, liberal agenda. So this just follows a kind of general, uh, you know, generational uh, line when it comes to uh, progressive versus conservative and all that. This is another just shows great, but lots of, but Moon Jae-in at the top with a kind of blue one, his thumb is almost a little bit over halfway through at the moment. So it's, as you can see, you know, all the pledges, basically at, at the very beginning, the popular support is very high, it goes down as time goes by. So Moon is doing the same thing, and, but he had a very uh, you know, high level of public support at the very beginning. So maybe that's the reason. Here, compared to his pre predecessor, he is doing quite okay. Now it looks bad, very bad, but his predecessor was much worse uh, by, at this uh, stage. And these are the uh, another uh, uh, poll for the which party uh, Korean public support. Again, the blue represents the governing party, red represents opposition party. And as you can see, there is a quite significant gap. Uh, that means it, when it comes to party line still, it's not that governing party is doing well. The opposition party is like 
here in the United States, Democratic Party is doing so poorly, right? So the Korea is quite reversed. The opposition, the conservative party is so unpopular. So that's, I think, the, where this uh, Moon government is holding the line, and that they are hoping for this uh, to you know, go through the coming election happening. On the other hand, one other uh, interesting uh, uh, data fact I want to show is this is uh, the superintendent of each province. And this blue is more of a liberal progressive uh, because they are elected uh, in each uh, uh, general election. So whenever uh, in the last election, the majority of Korea's superintendent in local uh, province was a progressive candidate. They were elected at the moment. That means you can see you know, what... And most recently, this was another interesting case. There was just a couple of weeks ago, uh, this soldier in Korean army, he went vacation for a month or two weeks. And when he went out, it was he. When she came back, it was she. So <laughs> she went through transgender, he went through transgender operation during his vacation. And he came and he or she came back and wants to still serve in the military. The military, we have never such a kind of case before. So the military basically, no, 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 we cannot allow a uh, transgender uh, person serving in an old military. I mean, simply, it's the first case, never happened before, and they were not ready for this kind of, you know, uh, they had no policy. Event. Yeah, and no, no policy, policy, simply no clue about what to do about it. And they decide to, you know, they cannot allow this person, even though uh, this person, they, I wanted to serve still for my country, even though I'm a transgender. So it has become a big social issue in South Korea, but these are the, some uh, opinion poll uh, compared to 20, 20 years ago and right now, what's the public perception about of this issue? As you can see, is, you know, South Korean general is quite progressive when it comes to, I, that doesn't mean that they're progressive in every you know, issue, but this is just, a, I, I thought this was a quite interesting uh, case. I was quite surprised that Korean public was that progress when it comes to this uh, issue, gender issue. And so this is uh, the coming election. You see those uh, different colors party. Again, the blue one is governing, the red one is the uh, opposition party. It's going to be a battle between these two mainly. But uh, one thing to watch is whether this yellow, uh, the justice party, which is much more left-leaning, more progressive than the governing party, they can do quite well this time. Or some other you know, uh, minor party. Uh, uh, on the other hand, there's also far right-wing party too. Uh -huh. So each of these, so bottom line is, under the current system, South Korean political uh, structure and the party will become much more colorful and diverse than before. Mm -hmm. So I think this reflects some, uh, the diversity in our society and different uh, aspects of our life and people have a different opinion <coughs> and South Korea become more and more you know, democratic and you know, uh, society. But especially in particular at this moment, uh, that has aligned with a more progressive the direction, at least so far. But of course, as a uh, 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 gentleman uh, raised at the very beginning, it could reverse. I'm, I'm not so sure, in fact. So my point is this April coming general election will be very, very critical for South Korea's, for current government, first of all, but also South Korea's you know, a, a long-term uh, outlook of how our society will change and which will affect, of course, in every aspect of government policy, starting from economic policy or, or even foreign policy and all that. So let me, why don't I just stop here and uh, we can talk more about what's the implication of you know, alliance and you know, all that. Uh, sure. I will be happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you.
Well, thank you very much, Sangha. Wonderful uh, to lay out some markers so clearly and so usefully. I think we have 40 minutes, so I'm speaking both to the folks who are online as well as in the room. Ground rules again, we are on the record. Just introduce yourself and your affiliation and pose a comment or question. We'll start there uh, at the, on the left and then work our way around. Yes, <clears throat> Dave Fitzgerald, retired Foreign Service. Thank you for your presentation. I was uh, struck by the rhetoric that's being used about uh, uh, progressive liberalism and, uh, and the like in Korea politics. And the three issues you, you mentioned as examples, uh, election reform, uh, what was the other one, the, the prosecutor's, uh, prosecutor's office, office yeah. and then the lowering of the voter age. Yeah. Those are not particularly liberal issues or progressive issues when you think of the socioeconomic problems that face Korea and have faced Korea and many other societies over the last 70 years in terms of technological changes and greater access to education, uh, greater equality of, or, uh, in access to economic uh, development. There's none of that in the uh, party of President Moon in terms of accomplishments. So what is his agenda going into the election other than this inside baseball political science stuff that maybe will affect 10 people, sway 10 votes in the, uh, in the, general, in the election in, uh, assembly? These are not major th uh, accomplishments, it would seem to me, for any party trying to uh, going into a contested election. And just on the other point about the uh, increase of uh, proportional representation. <laughs> 50 years ago, books on Korean politics in South Korea talked about the atomization of Korean politics and the way uh, parties grew up around individuals. And if we go back to that proportional representation where you get single issues forming the basis for a one person and maybe his small, his or her small group to contest in a, an election in a particular district, you're inviting a increased atomization of politics, which means a weaker coalition. And Korea's already been the weakest link in the uh, foreign policy issues in terms of dealing with tensions in, in Northeast Asia. The Korean government looks like it's going to get weaker. There's a lot there. No matter who's so there. Whether it's a uh, moon or his successor. Okay, uh, let me let me try. It's an excellent question, as, and uh, it seems like you have a very good understanding about Korean society. Yes, it is definitely. I have to be very careful when I use some certain you know general terms like progressive, that liberal, because it could mean very anything, uh, and and sometimes it could mean quite opposite, depending on who you are, where you are standing, and. Uh, uh, so, first of all, I, I, I was trying to use this in the very Korean context. Here in the United States, you know, check and balance between, pro I mean, it's, it's such a you know, common sense, right? I mean, who, who calls it progressive? But, at least in Korean context, for example, Korea's system so far has been so rigid for the past seven years, uh, 70 years. So even for here in the United States, such a common sense could change itself could represent very significant political shakeup in power structure of Korean society. Because those prosecutor's office represent the very uh, cream of the crop or the very establishment of Korean society, aligned with the, the media, uh, the mainstream media. Mainstream media, by the way, tends to be in Korea. Choson, Chungang, Ambassador, <laughs> you, you should know, all those are very tend to portray a very conservative view. Whereas here in the United, quite often, here in the United States, I don't know whether you still call it, you know, Washington Post and New York Times or mainstream media, media in Korea is completely opposite. So you have to, uh, I have to be also, you have to be a little bit careful in, in uh, trying to understand what I say, try to say. That's my first point. So for spiritual Koreans, that's a quite important, significant change. And, and also political party affiliation. Anyway, under the, the previous system, there was no room for this minor, small party who uh, can have their own voice. Always come down to either those uh, 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 specific region-based, again, the conservative, dominant, this 
uh, party politics versus this minor uh, progressive party. Now you will become much more diverse. That in and itself is, a, I think, a quite important change for Korean politics. So, so what? What does that mean? It could mean still quite uh, serious uh, policy implication. For example, current government, yes, Moon is try, basically trying all this to uh, you know, push forward with his own uh, other policy agenda, such as in when it comes to economic policy, he wants to uh, have a more government role in our domestic economy, meaning that he wants to uh, uh, expand our social uh, welfare. He wants to, uh, uh, and the, he, one of the key agenda uh, at the very beginning was the raising the minimum wage, for example, which was, by the way, criticized and which was, you know, mm. completely in Korea, all the business and all the, you know, uh, uh, medium-sized company, the owners and the mainstream media said, this is, a, this is, it's like a socialist. How can we, can we do that? And we, our national, uh, uh, if the government spends like crazy, then our, we, our fiscal uh, uh, deficit will go crazy and our, we, our, uh, uh, Government budget in, in the uh, tank and Korean economy is doomed. No, no, no. We have to give more tax break for the company so that they can grow and then they can have a trickle down impact. And Moon says, no, no, no. That's like 80s and 90s. In 2000, 2020, you know, Korean economy cannot like a, have a 6 or 10 percent economic growth like before. We are like, we are more like Japan. The role of government should be bigger. We have to check. government should play very active. So it has a very important policy implication, which I think you are also having in this coming election about you know uh, the Republican Party and the Democrat Party. You have this uh, big body jet, or, or, I mean even the Bernie Sanders talking about you know self claimed you know social democratic socialist. So that kind of uh, debate is happening in Korea right now. And it's been uh, very much uh, a, a, a hard fight between the left and right in Korean context about what should be the direction of our economic policy. And also, I think it eventually has to do with alliance issue as well. The one thing that I didn't mention, but which is also happening in Moon is pushing forward operational control transfer from the United States. That doesn't mean that he wants to, he doesn't like the alliance, he doesn't want to finish the alliance, but at least he, he tends to think Korea right now, like as Mr. Trump says, our economy is quite strong, maybe we should take more responsibility for our own national defense. Whereas our conservative basis, so that's a great thing. No, 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 no. we don't want to do that. So there's a fight, and if that happens uh, in by 20, they're planning to do it by 2022 before Moon Jae-in's presidency ends. That again represents major change in our alliance partnership. So there are certain, I think, uh, uh, actual change that could happen, but it's not guaranteed yet. Of course, I'm, I'm not saying that it will happen for sure, but we will have to see. Before we go to Rob, I just want to clarify one thing, so, for my understanding. So the question that was posed were these in, in this context would appear sort of more technical or technocratic changes to a political structure. But you're suggesting in the Korean context, these do have salience as progressive sure. issues. That, at least that's just my you that's know, your interpretation. interpretation. Right. right, right. I, just so it I looks understand. small, but it opens up a quite important uh, and is that the okay. argument that the president is making as you go up to the National Assembly elections? These changes are part of our changing our society? Oh, yeah, sure. Well, sure. Okay. Uh, Rob was next. I'm sorry. And then Ambassador Hubbard. Uh, Ambassador Hubbard, do, were you on this point? Oh, well, partly, yeah. I, okay, uh, yeah, so why don't, may I just ask the ambassador because if it's on this point? Sure, I'll be down. Then, well, I mean, thank you very much, uh, Professor Shin. I, I finally understand why the Chogook. Yeah. The issue was so important. Okay. And uh, really appreciate your, your clarifying it. And, and I also really appreciate your, uh, your clarifying the implications of this electoral uh, reform. I, I was, for those who don't know, I was ambassador to Korea under Kim Dae Jung. I was there when Nomi Hyun was surprisingly elected. Mm. And then I was there for the first 
couple of years of his term, so I have a lot of experience with, with uh, sure. perhaps more experience than anybody else with progressive, uh, yeah. quote, progressive yeah, <laughs> governments. And, and I guess I, I, uh, I was going on the assumption then and that the Korean public was roughly divided 50 50 sure and that uh, that uh, you know there was going to be alternating governments and and uh, and and frankly that I also I think just as a comment I I I, I I always felt that people kind of conflated No Mi Un with Kim Dae Jung in the sense they were both progressives. But in fact, in my experience, Kim Dae Jung was very focused on North Korea sure. and what could be done. Right. Uh, the Sunshine Policy. Right, right, right. And No Mi Un was very focused on domestic, domestic. policy, That's on right. the internal yes. situation, and trying yeah. to trying to change right. uh, South Korean mm. uh, society. Exactly. And it, it strikes me that. Moon is simultaneously trying to carry on No Mi Un's domestic approach and 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 following on Kim Dae Jung's exactly. approach towards North Korea. So it's a very big load that right. he is he has has taken on. And and I I uh, I wanted to uh, Dave I wanted to uh, you you mentioned that the uh, the structural changes that they are making in the election will will have only limited effect, but I'd like all of us to think about what the effect would be of the structural change of getting rid of, of the, uh, of, of the, the electoral, uh, mm -hmm. uh, going to the popular vote right. on yeah. the president, getting, getting, rid, getting rid of the electoral, electoral yeah. college, yeah. Sure. Had an absolutely enormous change in our policy, Democrats mm -hmm. would have been office, in office uh, uh, virtu virtually constantly over the last five terms, I guess. So, so this, these little structural changes can be big. and. Again, I thank you for uh, elucidating it. Yes. Oh, absolutely. I, I completely agree with you. I mean, you made an even more, much better case than mm -hmm. me. <laughs> Speaking of so, the, those changes happening, uh, yeah. thank you so much for your yeah, comments. Sorry, sorry. Thank you, Best Ever. So, Rob, thank you. Thanks for your patience. I'll come Rob Warren, a retired Foreign Service Officer. I'd like to turn to the international situation. You're the director of the center handling that, I think, among other things. Mm -hmm. uh, there are three issues that I'd like to ask you your response to. One is the U.S. demands that uh, South Korea sharply increase its contributions to our military, uh, uh, allaying some of the costs that we have there locally. Uh, secondly, uh, the hard line position the administration is taking, uh, maximum pressure on North Korea, uh, sanctions. And uh, as far as I know, uh, uh, no will movement towards uh, will negotiations at this point. And then thirdly, uh, the trade policy, the trade war essentially. Uh, again, uh, we have, I think, uh, compromised with South Korea at the present time, but there's certainly emphasis on a transactional commercial relationship. Okay, uh, again, th those are the excellent uh, uh, question and very important issue at the moment between US and uh, Korea. Uh, first about uh, this uh, uh, you know, U.S. demand, uh, or not U.S., Trump, Mr. Trump's demand uh, for this increase in uh, burden sharing. Of course, in South Korea, I mean, everybody, general public says it's too much. And that sense is not only among the progressive or liberals who is more critical of uh, U.S. or alliance, but by the way, these days, I mean, those days of anti-American regime in South Korea, I think it's gone. When it comes to alliance, South Korean public, whether progressive or conservative, they become much more rational and objective. Uh, it used to be a very emotional issue, uh, but not anymore. They tend to be very objective, and that's what the Moon Jae-in government policy. I was very uh, struck by uh, Moon Jae-in, uh, you know, when he uh, welcomed the General Abrams, uh, the current U.S. FDK command, uh, commander in his Blue House, he said, uh, I, I watched it on, on, on a video, and he said, the alliance uh, with the United States is so important. I think this should, be, this should continue even after unification. He says so very clearly by looking at the, uh, General Abrams. And I thought, you know, even though he's a politician, but 
He is also a person with very prudent. Uh, he doesn't say things very easily. So I could see uh, whether it's a progressive or conservative Korean government knows the importance of lies. I think the Korean public. But when President Trump makes that kind of demand, even the, I, I was also again surprised. One of my conservative colleagues in our you know, kind of private session and joint uh, uh, seminar said, let them go. And we can develop a nuclear weapon. That was, it was not progressive. It was a one of hard uh, support of the alliance, you know, who is very critical of upcoming transfer and all that. He said, you know, still, five times of increase, this transactional approach about the alliance, it's alliance, I said. I mean, we fought together and we are doing still together and dealing with North Korea and all kinds of stuff. But is this a, what we, you know, get? So that's the kind. I think there's a, such a general perception among the public that I think, oh, by the way, that is very well shared by the, in fact, American officials in the field and the, the U.S. commanders in uh, Korea. So they try to keep, I mean, they're in such an impossible position right now. But I hope somehow they can come up with a very creative way of persuading somehow the president that uh, they can uh, the alliance is important enough uh, for that kind of money issue. The second, maximum pressure. In that, I think there is a, a little bit of more clear uh, division. Okay? Although they always say they all be on the same page and all that, but obviously Moon Jae-in, as Ambassador Hubbard uh, made it very clear, his definitely is following the Kim Dae-jung's uh, more engagement, uh, if not sunshine. So obviously, uh, they want to have also certain kind of you know combination of pressure and uh, incentive. And there is a kind of some uh, tension between American government at the moment and Korean. And Korean government is trying to figure out okay, very creative way of on the one hand, you know, trying to assure America that we are on the same page, but at the same time, trying to engage with North Korea, such as like uh, individual trip uh, to North Korea. Of course, I thought this coronavirus outbreak, maybe that option is off the table for the time being. But anyway, the third uh, trade war, I think this is a still, uh, there's a, of course, who knows what Trump will say, but I, my general impression is uh, we are quite, we managed quite well. When Trump came up with his critique of our course FTA, demanded lots of increase in tariffs on our steel uh, and, and others uh, like uh, automobile, the Korean government uh, made, uh, made that issue as more or manageable. So at least in the among the Korean uh, public, there is no kind of worry or anxiety or criticism about this issue. We, we, feel, we feel like we are quite doing okay at this moment. Uh, yes, please. Um, I'm, my name is Nia Taylor, yes. and I'm with the um, International Council on the Life Sciences. I'm curious, um, since President Moon is now in the middle of his term, as you say, and it's not a renewable term, right? Um, what do you think his, um, his legacy, what do you think his thinking about his legacy will be in the domestic arena? Because I think it's pretty clear what he wants in his foreign policy. So I think uh, that's a very wonderful, a wonderful question. By the way, nice to, uh, good to see you again, Mia. Yeah. We are classmates from the uh, Fletcher together. <laughs> it goes all the way back. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, maybe if I may, I could think of a two legacy uh, he maybe is trying to do. First, uh, trying to finish unfinished business by his best friend, Lo Muya, in his especially domestic reform. Mm -hmm. And uh, even in the foreign policy, as uh, Ambassador alluded very well, you know, trying to somehow uh, set a kind of cornerstone in, in terms of inter-Korean relations. And he is making very sure uh, that uh, 
his at least on at least under his term, his priority is it is a peace over unification. Although he of course we want unification on it, but practically speaking, he is more for or, or like we want to have a more normal relations with North Korea. That means what I I we want to acknowledge North Korea as a, a legitimate separate entity. Uh, at least for for a time being. That means we are not going to try to kind of regime change or observe North Korea. That's a kind of, and based on that basic term, that we can establish and build a new relations with North Korea. Of course, that depends on one big question, this nuclear issue. That's the fundamental problem. But at least it's set a kind of new tone when it comes to inter-Korean relations. And the difference is, in fact, that's what, yes, Kim Dae-jung uh, uh, tried to do. But at that time, even including me, I couldn't really trust North Korea. I couldn't really buy it. It was a little bit too much of fantasy. How can we trust North Korea? And how can we live with those crazy regimes? But that kind of sentiment has become changed a little bit. I think the Korean public is accepting more of it as a reality. As long as somehow we can uh, uh, solved issue of uh, nuclear uh, 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 problem. And finally, I think as a politician, what she wishes for is, yes, she wants to have next government, uh, followed by, succeeded by his own party candidate, whoever that will be. So there will be a kind of continuing, uh, continuation of liberal politics, in, in at least for the next five or 10 years. Yes, you were here next, sir. Yeah. Were there others on this side? Okay, please. So, just identify yourself, please. My name is Juan Kim. I'm a partner at one of the largest firms in the United States. This is my personal opinion, sure. so I'm not going to identify yeah. my law partner. Um, so, I entered college in 1980. There was a military coup. A lot of my friends died, a lot of them were arrested. Some of them are in this government. The, the issue that I have with the, with the current government is, if you look back, every president in Korea who did wrong, as defined by the, you know, the law, uh, with the exception of Kim Dae-jung and Kim Young-sum, they were either indicted or went to jail. No. I thought that was good, because if you did wrong, you went to jail. Right. So there was a sense of justice. Mm. I think I was okay. Mm. I'm okay with that. The issue I have with the current government is, and I disagree with their characterization, is that they're interfering in the name of change of the prosecutor's office, the independence of the prosecutor's office. This prosecutor's office, independence, checked in some sense the strength of the presidency. And if you have a president as strong as you do in the Republic of Korea, there has to be some form of a check. So where the reform is used to directly interfere with investigations of the current sitting politicians, I think that's political interference. I think that's very anti-democratic. And up to now, I, I thought Korea was great, not necessarily because of economic growth, which it did very well, but because it progressed to democracy, meaning there, the, the, those who were in power were held responsible. So I see that as being seriously eroded by this current administration. And so, but one other thing, I'm sorry. In the United States, the Department of Justice has a right to investigate. In fact, they own, they control FBI, right? It's under the Department of Justice. That's right. So, so if the, the taking away of investigative authority from the prosecutor's office doesn't, doesn't seem to make sense to some of us. So you're saying that, uh, are you, I'm just trying to understand, the, you don't see the prosecutor see only as a check Right. But you don't see the National Assembly or any other institution in Korea as a check on the presidential powers. They cannot investigate the president. Right. right. So, so this con concept of being progressive, I think, is inconsistent with what's being actually done. Uh, first of all, the thing is, in, in, no, I'm not necessarily trying to defend this current government, first of all. I'm just trying to, you know, first of all, tell as far as I as observer what's happening in Korea. So uh, 
I don't want to make any judgment this particular you know, reform is uh, good or bad. Yes, in fact, by the way, what you just pointed out, that's one of the key debates that's happening in Korea. And honestly, I cannot really tell you whether you are right or who it would. Because it, there could be some other counter argument uh, coming from those present moon and his supporters. No, no, no. He's really trying to make it more independent or more, more, more fair or right? more transparent with this political reform. Why? Because he's trying to cut his own uh, ties with prosecutor's <coughs> office. That he's not talking to prosecutor's office. He used to be always, for example, one uh, of the thing is this uh, even though, yes, and uh, legally and, and you know, uh, structurally, this prosecutor, the, the prosecutor general, how, I don't know how we say in English, the Komchal Chongjang, he is under the attorney general's uh, uh, command, but they had quite interesting, you know, the, uh, the power dynamics. There used to be the, uh, uh, this uh, general, uh, prosecutor general used to have much bigger power. And, they used to always have a kind of, you know, uh, talk to presidency directly whenever they want to. Because they have the all kinds of information and they have the all kinds of, yes, investigative power. So you can have all kinds of dirt on your political opponent and all that. So these people are saying, we are not doing it anymore. Uh, we are not talking to this uh, prosecutor's office directly. You do your job, but in much more uh, balanced way. That's what they're trying to say. Of course, lots of criticism, lots of, by doing so, you're still making it kind of as a kind of political instrument and it's a very politically convenient argument, they say. So there's a, such a criticism, I, I understand, and that's a, a, one of the issues. But I'm not so sure, uh, on, maybe time will tell. We will see uh, later how it goes. But, my point is, as Satu just alluded, as South Korea and then, uh, society is becoming more and more democratic. I mean, we are already full uh, democratic uh, country, and but the, the more uh, power is divided, uh, the shared by different, more diverse entity. I think that in and itself will create a more fundamental structure of check and balance, whether that will be a president office or uh, a Congress or. What, Big chamber and and that's what will they are headed and but more technically two things the counter argument they can make is one thing is they are so they are creating independent uh, uh, prosecutor's office which will exactly do the that kind of job they will invest focus on if there's any wrongdoing by the high ranking uh, uh, official including president's office and it, another fact is they are actually doing it right now. But sir, yes. they have removed the prosecutors who were investigating the people in power. They were all removed in the middle of an investigation. I cannot agree with that characterization that that is leading to independence. That would not be accepted in any OECD country. Even during the military rule, that was not seen. So I'm seeing this move as a direct threat to democracy. Uh, so your concern is not so much the reform in the prosecutor's office as power, but they're moving of particular prosecutors who have indicted the right. who, who are who following are up investigating. Up investigation. Right. It's okay. like, so that's a slightly like, different issue than reforming the prosecutor's office's powers in general. Right. But they have not reformed it. Their reform, reformation is removing those who were investigating the currently those in power. Uh, that's, uh, but that's all what the, they're doing. Yeah, right? all the details. That's what they're doing. I mean, so, but, yeah, sorry, first of all, sorry, I, I'm not in a position of knowing I, into that all the details. Right, right. Of, uh, sorry, I'll uh, hold back. But coming back to yeah. the political uh, election issue that you had first raised, mm -hmm. there's a, in, in a democratic system, if you have more than two parties, there's a thing called voting paradox. So the majority really doesn't get what it wants because of the way the two minorities would collaborate. Have any thoughts on that? Voting paradox of democracy? Because you're, in the, if you look at the United States, you have the Republican Democratic Party. They absorb different factions to absorb 
the message. If, you, if it breaks up, you have to have different factions, and that creates a, what's called a paradox, a voting, voting, voting paradox. So any thoughts on that? I cannot, sorry, I cannot still quite uh, get your, your argument, uh, but as far as I see, this creates sorry, more kind of representation uh, among, yes, it could happen in a way that uh, if they collaborate among those liberal party leaning, you know, different party, uh, they make alliance, they uh, push for their own agenda, maybe they are losing, uh, especially the conservative, which is happening right now, they, they lost this big legislative battle, but, but still, those party alliance represented still the majority voice of Korean society. Right. Of but course, it, still, I mean, it's, yes, in that process, those conservative base, 40% who support those conservative, their voices are not heard in this case. But that's, 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 the, you know, that's the majority vote, uh, the, the essence of democracy, isn't it? Right, but the voting paradox flips that around. Mm. That's the problem with voting paradox, is that you have a party that's not majority, who's able to buy off a very minority party in order to gain what they want. So that's an economic theory that's been widely studied. Uh, I think we, 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 we don't have to wait a minute to... You might want to do it offline. I've got a couple more questions I want to get Sorry, to because we have 10 minutes. Dave, oh. would you introduce yeah, yourself? Um, David Kuiper, I'm a retired force, foreign service officer and a well of East West Summit. Great to have you. Uh, um, uh, We've not mentioned Japan hmm. and the impact that of the trends that you have seen possibly developing, certainly on the progressive side, how that might influence the dialogue and negotiations that are going on between Japan and Korea at this time. That was one of my questions as well. How much you're looking at the clock as if you need more than ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a very tough question. <laughs> But, uh, okay, this is another reason why I did. The, the Japanese can say, yes, this is a complete breach of the spirit of agreement. You said in, back in 1965, or the compensation issue has been settled. How come South Korean government come back like some 30 years, 40 years back later? saying, oh, by the way, all these individuals have a, a right to sue or, or claim for their own compensation. Uh, but at the same time, uh, and, and they say, oh, this is all because of uh, uh, this progressive uh, the, uh, moon government uh, political agenda. Uh, uh, they, they have, in that sense, they are being more nationalistic when it comes to history issue of Japan and all that. It's moons doing it, all that. Maybe that could be the, that is possible uh, interpretation. I, I, I see it. there's a certain point, but at the same time, it's not that simple to me. That's exactly where there's a, some kind of fundamental clash between the Japanese approach to this issue. They are very much state-centric when it comes to this uh, uh, compensation and all the 65. Whereas this Moon government saying that, Yes, we understand that rhetoric, but at the same time, this is the decision has been made by our judiciary with their own judgment. And, and yes, I mean, there are certain things that they didn't handle it quite well. Uh, then, then what's the government position on that judiciary decision and how you are going to handle in between the Japanese position and this your Korean judiciary, the Supreme Court decision, the government maybe had to act more deftly or more proactively, you know, trying to resolve those tension between those two. But it's not like Moon Jae-in trying to sabotage those agreements or including the comfort woman agreement on the part of the There's a lot of political, domestic politics in, uh, issues involved. And they keep saying that, you know, this individual uh, case have been decided by our South Korean uh, Supreme Court and on that, as a, you know, democratically elected government, we have to also respect those Supreme Court uh, uh, case. So let's talk about it, how to deal with this, but we cannot completely disregard those Supreme Court decisions. And the Japanese came back, no, we cannot accept that. It's just no over the top of all this. 
you Koreans are doing, you know, you are not keeping your promise and all kinds of. So we got here, and so it's it's not very easy uh, uh, solution. I, there is no, I think, easy solution. Maybe they have to really have more faith, patience, but uh, they have to be a little bit more creative uh, uh, from both sides. The Japanese cannot just keep, you know, saying that let's go to the international court or we cannot accept all this. Because it was also on my list, and just let me follow up, I, so I'm trying to understand something. One is the Supreme Court of Korea ruled on what? The 65 agreement? as a agreement between two sovereign parties of the Republic of Korea and Japan for domestic law. It's not clear to me what they ruled on which allows the cases to go forward. And secondly, I, I quite understand this. The other Korean friends and colleagues have made this point that Japan may approach this as a state-centric issue. Korea is uh, at least articulating it as, as a Supreme Court that they have to follow through and abide by. But it does seem to me that that veers very quickly into domestic politics, populist issues, identity issues, which are, for the lack of a better way of saying it, Japan is approaching it as a state-centric issue and Korea is approaching it as a societal issue. Right. So that seems to me not compatible. I mean, at some point, that's not going to be articulated in any reasonable manner because you're arguing from different presuppositions exactly. and bases. That's, that's why it doesn't that's, seem right, right, right. reconcilable to me if those are how the two countries are approaching. Exactly. So that's why uh, it is, has become a, such a difficult issue. It's not, oh, by the way, it's not about the money. Some people talk about the money. No, the money itself is it's a very small amount. Of, it's more of a symbol, a, a different you know, perspective and approach on this issue. But then, uh, the, first of all, to answer to my best knowledge of this Supreme Court decision, first of all, this Supreme Court decision has been already made, was on the way, not on the Moon administration, but before Park Geun-hye administration. Okay. That decision has been already made. But simply, the Park, so there's another twist. Park Geun-hye government tried to intervene into this Supreme Court decision, worrying that if that get out, it will rupture, rupture all this their comfortable de uh, deal with Japan and all that. Mm -hmm. And of course, the, I know that America was behind in you know, saying that, no, you guys talk. So there's a some certain pressure on Park Geun-hye government. So they uh, tried to, uh, they, they tried to delay it. And that, and that they simply delayed it. So that has become another kind of uh, political scandal right now. And that the that, uh, Supreme Court, the head of the Supreme Court went to jail for that. They made a deal over this uh, uh, judicial issue with the previous government. That was one of the key indictment, and so the, that made Moon's government position more even more difficult. They cannot really intervene. I mean, Japanese say that you know the international treaty is above the domestic law, but Moon cannot quite say that. Yes, and in a way, it, 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 it is intermixed with the domestic political issue at that time. So my point is, it's not just Moon was trying to uh, uh, drive this kind of nationalist uh, liberal agenda with this issue. It happened to be like this, and it's, it was a yes. And you go back to to Sato, your point. So the whereas the Japan's state-centric approach when it comes to this issue, South Korean approach is becoming more and more societal issue. We, we, Populist. Yeah, populist. But then Moon government is still <coughs> trying to come up with a certain kind of uh, compromise. But so far, the other government is, is not making any kind of trying to concession on that issue. Well, was they're he, very, very much adamant was, about it. Was the government reform. required under that decision to the government bring the case or individuals who were impacted would bring the case? The individual. The it individuals. was between individuals suing the Japanese private company. That's why the Supreme Court made a decision. It's not about the Japanese government. The individual, Korean individuals are suing okay. the Japanese private company that confiscated their labor during the colonial period. Okay. So the Korean government is saying that this is a civil case, yeah. civil suit. It is. Uh, it is. So that's what makes it very difficult for yeah. the government at this moment. Uh, you have oh, the last, last question or last oh, point. Yes. 
<coughs> uh, Mitsuo Nakai is my name, uh, Japan native, U.S. citizen. Uh, my question, I have two questions, but since, uh, since 1945, how many Korean presidents have been indicted? Mm. Many, mm. okay? Uh, it, it happened before you were born, I'm sure. Uh, so my, my main question is, what is or what are the bottom line uh, cause of problems uh, of, of uh, corruption or indictment? Uh, it, that's that's uh, that's the uh, that's the one thing that really bothers me because I think ROK is is a best country. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's been grown since 1945. So that that I'm 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 sorry to hear a lot of things, a lot of presidents being indicted. Uh, that saddened me and my friends. Right. Yeah. So that's one thing I want to know. Mm -hmm. Number two, mm -hmm. uh, I'll make it quick. Uh, if you had the power mm. in your country mm. to change something regarding government or culture, yes. what would be the ones you want to change? Let's say you become president of South Korea. Hypothetical question. Yeah, well, the second so question I have is very easy. So no, simply, there's nothing that I want to change. <laughs> I mean, it's up to people. It's not me yeah. uh, to decide. And how can I know what is good for my country? I mean, yes, I, I do always have my own personal opinion on all the issues. But so far, uh, in general, uh, I think uh, despite all this problem we are having, including every president going into the jail, I'm not very proud of it, of course, as a Korean, whether it's, you know, whoever the president. I was but asked, at the same time, I was asking I, because uh, same type of things happened in Japanese government right. way back yeah. in the history. That's right, that's right. But not to this extent. It's, right, right, it's, exactly. Yeah. It goes into, uh, uh, so I'm going into... So that's why I'm asking. Uh, right, yeah, the first question, I, I, I can see why you're asking the first question. But anyway, coming to that second question. so. But my general take is whether it was a, a progressive government or conservative government, I think over the past, since the uh, independence of Korea, we had a lot of problems, but bottom line is we made this problem, both economically and politically. And each time, yes, people are debating, people are you know, uh, crying out loud, we have a, such a, we are doomed, we have so many problems, but somehow, I think there was something was going right. And I think that's just the people uh, made a kind of fundamental uh, change in our society, but in which each, I think, government played a certain very important role, whether they did it knowingly or not. So uh, that's just one of the topics in my other class. And I look at all each administration, and all administrations has a lot of problems and lots of uh, issues but at least when it comes to Korea's uh, both economic political development, I, I'm very thankful and grateful about what they have done in each of their uh, uh, the, the critical moment. And I think the current government is also in maybe trying to do that kind of role, play a role. And going back to uh, you, your first question, in that sense, yeah, and it's also Right now, first of all, uh, for example, the, the criteria for, so what crime do you want to keep, uh, put your president in jail? Here, look at, here, it does. This question does come up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's say, if you are the President Trump in South Korea, maybe he went to jail 10 times already <laughs> for what he has been doing in his office. I mean, President Park Geun-hye going into jail, only I think that her, her uh, 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 mistake was she didn't make a deal. I mean, she could do the, the Nixon things. She could resign before uh, impeachment, and then maybe people will say, okay, you know, enough. 
there will be no more indictment. Who knows? Maybe I don't know. But that might happen. She she didn't maybe have to go to jail eventually. But somehow she believed that she is innocent, quite in a way, uh, 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 rightly from her uh, supporters' perspective. And then, but people didn't uh, uh, accept her, 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 her role uh, during her government. There was some uh, uh, certain money amount. When it comes to amount of money, the bribery, Lo Tae Woo and Chong Duan was like a tens of uh, hundreds of millions of dollars they were putting in their pocket. Compared to that, yeah, Park Geun-hye, it, it's not even didn't it get into his, her own pocket. It was just for the, some contribution to her kind of foundation. The amount itself was millions, yeah. maybe a couple of millions of dollars in the United States. Still, that could be perfectly legitimate. So it's it really depending on how you interpret uh, in, the, uh, in the political and social context in each time. So I would say South Korean you know, has a very, very tough and high standard for any high office and uh, president. And that's getting even more strict and strict. I'm really worried, no matter, unless you are God, after presidency, maybe you have to, to go to jail. But, so that's unfortunate. But maybe that sometime, uh, at certain point, there will, I hope, uh, uh, be not the case anymore. We will see what happens mm. uh, after President Moon uh, is done with his office. Maybe he, he may not go to the jail, but <laughs> who knows? Mm. The President Law's uh, indictment was, again, okay, it's not that he accepted as, uh, any of his money. His uh, wife, uh, First Lady, still allegedly, she accepted some donation from private businessmen couple of million dollars. That was it. So, is there a, a okay, right we, we, we have to, we have to, call, you maybe offline, you can take it. I'm sorry, I just, we have a online webcast, so we have to close up. Thank you for those who joined us online. Thank you, of course, to all of you who came uh, during your work day. I know people are very busy uh, to join us for this program. And, and most of all, please join me in thanking Sung Ho Shin for giving us a service. Thank you.